a series lcr circuit consists of an inductor a capacitor and a resistor all three connected in series which means one after the other now this circuit is driven by an external alternating source which is given by v equals vm sin omega t so this is an alternating voltage see what we want to find here in this lcr circuit is the total opposition to the flow of current which means we want to find out the impedance offered by this circuit the impedance comes partly from the inductor partly from the capacitor and partly from the resistance because the inductor offers an inductive reactance the capacitor offers a capacitive reactance and the resistor offers a resistance now just as say you have three resistors in series one say r1 r2 and r3 and you know that the total resistance for this case is r1 plus r2 plus r3 but in this case we cannot simply add them up and say that the total impedance offered is xl plus xc plus r now before we find the total impedance just a quick look at these quantities over here now the inductive reactance xl is given by omega times l and the capacitive reactance xc is 1 by omega c where omega is the angular frequency of this alternating voltage which means say this alternating voltage has a frequency of let us say 50 hertz then the angular frequency for this source is 2 pi f which is equal to 100 pi and the units would be radians per second so it just tells us how fast does this vary just a small riddle you have to answer this i stop high frequencies what's my name low ones have no chance of going by me no matter what frequency i'm always the same now the answer to this would be inductor stops high frequencies capacitor stops low frequencies and you know that it blocks the dc because omega is 2 pi f and if f is zero then the capacitive reactance would be infinite and in case of a resistor it doesn't change even if the frequency of the source changes so if i just put this on a graph say this is the frequency and this is the individual impedances now in case of an inductor you get a straight line like this because at high frequencies the reactance increases in case of a capacitor you get a graph like this because at very low frequencies the impedance is extremely high and for a resistor you get a constant curve like this because its value doesn't change with frequency now let's get back to analyzing the lcr circuit and we are going to use phasors now see if you recall a phasor is a vector and it is used to represent voltages and currents for instance if v is equal to vm sin omega t then this phasor over here which is the red arrow represents this voltage because the length of this vector is vm which is the peak value of the voltage and the instantaneous value of this voltage can be read off as the projection on the y axis so this length over here is v which is equal to the instantaneous value of this voltage the angle theta is equal to omega times t and this vector rotates with an angular speed of omega now before we draw a phasor diagram for this lcr circuit let's just recall the phasor diagram for each of these circuit elements drawn individually first of all for a resistor the current is in phase with the voltage so this is the amplitude of the current and this is the voltage across the resistor 
and the phase difference between them is 0 degrees there is no phase difference and the voltage amplitude is related to the current amplitude by v is equal to i times r in case of a capacitor the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees which means the voltage in case of a capacitor lags the current by 90 degrees this lags by 90 degrees and the word lags means that the current reaches its maximum value before the voltage does now the amplitude of the voltage across the capacitor and the current amplitude is given by v is equal to i times xc in case of an inductor the current lags the voltage by 90 degrees the voltage in case of an inductor leads the current by 90. So we will say that V leads I by 90. We will just mention over here that V lags I and in this case V leads I because if you look at it the other way then I, I leads V and in this case I lags V. So you need to mention when you are saying leads and lags that which quantity leads or lags the other quantity and once again we have VL equals I times XL where XL is the inductive reactance. Now in the circuit that we have over here we have all these three components so we will have phases drawn for each of these. Now let us analyze this LCR circuit using phasers. Now in this circuit because of Kirchhoff's loop rule the instantaneous total voltage across all three components is equal to the source voltage at that instant. And now we will show that the phasor representing this total voltage is the vector sum of the phasors for the individual voltages. Now first of all let us draw a phasor diagram representing the current and the voltages for all these three circuit elements and we will put them all into the same diagram. Let us say this is the current amplitude I. The voltage across the resistor is in phase with this current so this is Vr. The voltage across the capacitor lags the current so this is Vc and the voltage across the inductor leads the current so this is VL. Now we need to add VL, VC and VR taking them as vectors. Now notice that since these two are in the same straight line VL minus VC is the vector sum of VL and VC and over here let us say this is VL minus VC but in this case I have assumed that VL is greater than VC. In case VL is not greater than VC which means VC is greater than VL then the resultant would be in the opposite direction. So you might have a resultant like this which is VC minus VL. First let us look at this when VL is greater than VC. Now the vector sum of VL minus VC and VR since they are perpendicular to each other would be the diagonal over here. So this is the resultant of VL minus VC and VR. Now using Pythagoras theorem I can write this voltage amplitude which I am writing as denoting by V. V is equal to root of VL minus VC square plus VR square. Now replacing these with the current times the respective impedances this would be xl minus i times xc plus i times r and this is squared and this is also squared. Now if you noticed over here I have used i capital I for the current amplitude. So V is the voltage amplitude and I is the current amplitude 
and from this on simplifying i would get i times root xl minus xc square plus r square and now i am going to denote this by z which is the total impedance offered by the circuit now what do you think is the si unit of impedance you can see that the si unit of impedance z is also ohms so just like resistance it also measures the resistance offered by the circuit but in this case we don't call it a resistance we call it an impedance next let us find the expression for the phase difference phi which is the angle between the voltage and the current now you can see from this triangle over here that we can write tan phi as vl minus vc over vr so this is vl minus vc over vr and once again expressing this in terms of the current and the impedances that would be i times xl minus i times xc over i times r which finally gives us xl minus xc over r and this is tan phi so phi would be tan inverse xl minus xc over r and this is the phase difference between the current and the voltage so now in this series lcr circuit with an external ac emf which is equal to v equals vm sin omega t we can write the current i as im sin omega t plus phi where phi is tan inverse xl minus xc over r and the current amplitude im see actually these i had told you earlier that these are the amplitude this is the current amplitude and this is the voltage amplitude maybe you can just subscript them as this because this is what we've been using for the amplitudes so the current amplitude im is equal to vm over the impedance z which is vm over root xl minus xc square plus r square to test your understanding answer these questions the answers are given about 5 seconds later now let's take a look at the answers the si unit of impedance is ohms the length of the voltage phasor represents its maximum value or its amplitude the total impedance of an lcr circuit z is equal to under root xl minus xc whole square plus r square the phase difference phi between the current and the voltage is given by phi equals tan inverse xl minus xc over r a series lcr circuit can behave like a purely resistive circuit see that happens when xl is equal to xc so this part becomes zero and in that case z is equal to r and this is resonance and this will be discussed in the lesson titled resonance